This is an SV Boney SV214 Pro. It's a three axis smartphone adapter to connect your smartphones up to eyepieces. And this particular version works from 23 millimeters up to 48 millimeters. So basically most of your 1.25 inch eyepieces are gonna work with this. They do make a version that is the 48 and up to like 60 something. Um, and that will cost you about $5 more. So they sent me this to review for free. Um, if you wanted to buy it, it would cost you about $45. They haven't paid me for this review, so my opinion is my own. All right, so in the box, we get the user's manual here. And a large piece of foam. There's a Bluetooth um, camera remote shutter so that you don't jiggle your setup while you're taking pictures. And then inside of this large piece of foam is the device itself. Now there's also another piece of, oh, that's the box for the Bluetooth receiver. So basically they give you the box with the instructions for the Bluetooth receiver, but it's flat packed in the side here. Now, I don't believe there's anything else. It's just that there. So this is, you know, kind of a weird shaped object. So it's kind of hard to, you know, store in a box. So it might be worth your while to keep this foam around, especially if you have a big hard case or something where you want that cut out to go into it. Okay. So this is a relatively standard cell phone clamp, um, but it has three of these axes that will adjust it, X, Y, and Z, which is kind of the hardest one to get working right with a lot of the other cell phone adapters that I've seen on the market. Um, so I have used a lot of two axis adapters. Some of them are XY, some of them are polar coordinate system where they kind of rotate and slide. Um, some of them you put your cell phone on and you have to put your cell phone exactly right and then clamp it down. Um, I'm hoping this will let me get a much better and easier image doing eyepiece projection into a cell phone's camera. So one thing I'm noticing immediately on my particular cell phone, which is the Google Pixel 7a, um, you don't really have a choice where you put this clamp. If you want the bottom of the cell phone to rest against that guy, you basically have to put the clamp right on top of that volume down button. So it's holding your volume down button down. And so while you're sitting there with your phone, your volume is down all the way. And if that button triggers any other actions, those actions are gonna just keep triggering. Um, so so I could slide my phone up a little bit, and I might need to like this, but then I don't get the benefit of the bottom of my phone being against this little area here. So they have a place there where you could conceptually get a USB charging cable to go through those pegs if your phone lines up correctly. Mine's a little bit off to the right, but I think a cable would still fit there. Now I am putting this in holding my case. I don't have a super thick case, but it has so far not required that I take the case off the phone for this to work. Now my cell phone cameras are way up there. The center point of this eyepiece is going to be down in this region. So I am going to have to slide this quite a ways to get that camera lined up. And let me see if there is enough motion for that to work with my particular cell phone. It looks like that'll work. This uh, thing is below the center point there, so I have some room I can move it back up to center it. Um, I'm also gonna have to go left, right, so I need to move this over this way, and I have to figure out which of those two cameras my uh, cell phone camera is going to be looking through as well. So clamping the eyepiece in is pretty easy. As long as it's round, you just stick it in there, and then this guy clamps it in place, and that has a nice firm hold on that guy. All right, so if you're in the light, it's pretty easy. You can turn your camera on, move this guy around, and basically turn it until the thing is centered. And then you can also go up and down to center it. 
So that was very nice. If you've ever tried to center a uh, eyepiece in a cell phone with one of these adapters, that was very smooth. Now I also still have the Z-axis, so I can adjust this Z-axis, and I might need to do that once it's on the telescope to get it focused exactly the way I want it. But that gives me a lot of adjustability there. So that's very nice. It's very clear which knob to turn to go in which direction, and, and that is kind of nice. Now this entire assembly with the eyepiece and the adapter and your cell phone, you know, that adds a decent amount of weight there. And so you have to be sure whatever you're screwing it into will be able to support it adequately. All right, so I put that on. It looks a little off center to me. So I am going to turn this knob till that guy centers, this knob till that guy centers. We're going to now point the telescope outside and look about focusing at this. Yeah, I am very happy with this. Just putting it on and moving things around, it had gotten off a bit, so it was kind of, you know, off like this. And I just, you know, twisted this dial till it was centered vertically, twisted this dial till it's centered horizontally. Um, and then the Z-axis, you can move up and down a little bit to position exactly where you want the view. Um, I thought the z-axis would give me a little more benefit than it does, but it is helpful just to get it where you want it exactly. So right here I'm taking a picture of the top of a telephone pole. And the telephone pole specifically is way over there on the other side of the lake, sticking up above the trees. You can see it in this video, right? Well, if not, you can see it right there. All right, so the user experience of aligning things here is really nice. Um, I'm going to have to try it at night to make sure it really works at night, but during the daytime, this is really great. All right, so I switched it off the smaller eyepiece, put in the big eyepiece, put it on the big eyepiece. I need to readjust because the eyepiece diameter is different. So rotate this guy till that's kind of centered. Um, I can adjust the z-axis to make it a little larger. I can move this back and forth until it's kind of the light is centered in the aperture area there. And then I can adjust the focus a little bit if necessary. My camera's focus is also auto-focusing as well. But that is really easy, switching between eyepieces, the, the reconfiguration or the, you know, the, the lining things up again. Having all three axes, is, that's, that's real slick there, and that's well worth it. So I found at night, when centering this guy, it's very useful to have a light you can hold in front of the telescope. And by holding this in front of the telescope, you can see kind of the center of the eyepiece view here. Um, and you can center that into the center of your camera. And that works pretty well. You can see I have a tiny little star right there, or caster, two stars. You can also adjust the z-axis and, you know, you can get really far away and see that, hey, it's centered pretty well there. Um, or you can move in to get more of the viewport into your camera view. So having a light you can hold in front of the telescope while you're working on the back here is very useful for lining this guy up. All right, I took this out last night, used it with my telescope, and let me tell you, compared to some other cell phone eyepiece adapters, it's a real joy to use. So a couple of features that stand apart. First of all, it has two points of fixed contact. So when I put my cell phone in, and push it up against those two points of contact, for the most part, it gets pretty much exactly where it was before. Now, it can wiggle just a little bit this way, and so it might not be a perfect alignment, but generally, when you put your cell phone back in, if it's already aligned for an eyepiece, it'll still have the eyepiece at least somewhere in the camera. 
Now having the X and the Y axis adjustable independently is really nice. Um, so, you know, if it's up or down, you just know to turn this knob. If it's left to right, you know to turn that knob. Um, so the X, Y axes being essentially locked all the time and yet movable is really nice. Some of the other ones I've used, you have to unlock something by unscrewing it. And when you unscrew it, both axes move around. You have to get it exactly right, and then you have to lock it down with a screw. And so in this case, they're basically, the axes stay where you put them, but you're free to move them around and fine tune. And the screw thread adjustment gives you, you know, very fine motion. Um, and it's very easy to get things centered. The Z axis is also useful. It's not critically useful. Generally, when I put this thing in, it would work, you know, where I left it. But moving the Z up and down was able to allow me to size things a little bit. So instead of being a little circle in the center, I could move it out until the circle filled more of the camera's field of view. Or I could pull it back really far and only get a little bit of my eyepiece in it, so it would basically zoom more. Um, the quality obviously goes down when you do that. But it gave you options to move things around without having to unscrew this and move it up and down your eyepiece or anything like that. So from a usage aspect, this thing was really nice. I'm never going back to any of my other telescope eyepieces. Now, that being said, the image quality didn't really improve much over my other cell phone mounts. Um, so once I got the other cell phone mounts lined in, it might take longer, it might be harder, it might be more annoying. Once I got them lined up, the image quality my cell phone took was about the same. So this guy isn't going to improve your cell phone image quality through a projection of, a, of an eyepiece. But what it will do is make it much easier and less effortful and less stressful to get it lined up perfectly to take those shots. And I am quite happy with this. You know, it's definitely worth paying 2x the price compared to some of the inexpensive ones that are harder to use. So comparing this to some other ones that I've used in the past, um, you have something like this where you put the cell phone in and you have to do X and Y adjustment yourself. Once you get it, you let go and it locks in because it clamps to your cell phone. That worked okay. Um, it was a little finicky. It took a while to get all these threads in and out to get the eyepiece locked in. But once you get it locked in and set up, it would stay where it was, even though this is just kind of a rubber clamp on your phone. I didn't like the fact that it was clamping the front of my phone screen, but it has rubber. It never hurt my phone, so it worked out okay. This guy here um, was the best one I had before this. The feature I really like on this is the auto lock. Um, and you know, so you can put this on an eyepiece and lock it down, you know, just very easily. And I prefer that to this guy, although this guy is nice because you know it's not going to come off. You tighten it down, it's set, it's set, it's, it's good. This guy has some kind of plastic gearing mechanism and it's possible it might pop out and then this thing might fall off your eyepiece. Um, but mounting wise, that action was, was really nice to get it mounted. Now what I really dislike about this guy, two things. First of all, it's not X, Y. It's kind of, you know, one dimension this way and one dimension rotate. So it's more of a polar coordinate system where it is, you know, kind of rho and, or sorry, it's theta and rho. Um, and you have to adjust both of them at the same time. And when you get it where you want it, then you have to twist this knob and lock it down without messing up your adjustment in either of those axes. So the ability here to twist one axis at a time, work on adjusting just one axis at a time, and it's already locked. As soon as you let go of the thread, it's locked in place. That's just so much easier to use than this. Now, I don't believe I've actually used one of these guys that just has the XY threads. Um, so if you found a telescope eyepiece adapter that didn't have the Z-axis but had the true threads in X and Y, I think that would give you 80% of the ease of use of this guy. The Z-axis is nice to have but I don't think it's critical to have. And it depends on you know, your phone's focus and your eyepieces and how well you are at getting the eyepiece at the right distance in the clamp. But you could do without the, the Z-axis, but it's kind of nice to have. I'm glad I have it, I'm not giving it up. Um, but you don't necessarily strictly need, or you know, I don't use the Z-axis as much as the X and Y axes. So, big question is, there's the move, shoot, move, three axis eyepiece adapter used to be twice as much as this guy. Now it's come down to be about $20 more than this guy. Um, I've never used that one, so I can't really compare them. 
pictures online make it look basically just like this guy. I've never used it, so I can't say for sure, but I kind of suspect this is a direct competitor, um, probably a drop-in replacement for that move, shoot, move, three-axis eyepiece adapter. I mean, I was I was coveting the move, shoot, move one when it was, you know, $89. I was like, yeah, I can't afford that. Um, now that it's down to $70, well, that's, you know, still 30 bucks more than this guy, but it's closer to the price range. Um, I definitely do recommend at least the two axis and the three axis is nice. So, you know, if you're comparing it to something like this or this, just don't bother with these guys. Save your money up. It might be twice the price, you know, but at, at $45, I think it's basically, this is kind of what I would say is the minimum cell phone eyepiece adapter I would suggest people buy. Um, you know, I, I just wouldn't spend your money or bother playing around with these guys. Um, maybe if you have something like a daytime use for a spotting scope and it's going to be dedicated for that one eyepiece, you could lock it on and just use it all the time. You know, maybe you might go for something cheaper. Um, but if it's going to be switched between different eyepieces, you're going to be using it on your telescope with, you know, different eyepieces, different zoom levels. Um, at night, the, the X, Y axis adjustment is really nice to have super easy at night. So about the only downside of this guy is the size and the weight. Um, it is 253 grams, that's about nine ounces. I have a relatively large burly telescope with a big tripod. When I attach this to an eyepiece and set it in the telescope, it doesn't move at all. If you had a small tripod or a small telescope, this extra weight of this guy in your in your camera phone um, could certainly cause the telescope to move when you put it on it. Um, so you know, keep in mind it is kind of heavy and it's a little bulky. Um, this guy doesn't pull apart or snap apart. You know, so when you store it, you are storing a piece this big somewhere. You know, so if weight is a prime concern, you can go with something that's significantly lighter. So, you know, this guy here is almost a third of the weight. Um, and storage space on this guy and packing space is obviously a lot smaller. So something like this, it's still in that 170 gram range, you know, so you're not adding that much more to go up to 250. Um, you know, so weight wise, this is similar. Now this, something like this, you can, you know, fold and you can store in a much more compact package. So it includes the little Bluetooth shutter dongle. Um, all I can say is it works. You pair it with your camera, you push the button, it takes a picture. My recommendation is to buy a neck lanyard for it because I've found that wearing this around your neck is a lot easier than like trying to wear it on your wrist with the little tiny wrist lanyard that they include here. Um, you know, and the wrist lanyard works, but then it bangs around into things. So my recommendation is get a neck lanyard if you're going to be using the remote shutter. Um, and I do recommend using the remote shutter. It's a lot easier than setting the auto timer to 10 seconds so you can hit your phone and wait 10 seconds for it to stop jiggling around.